I, I, I need to start with a sad story. It's a story about a fellow technologist and inventor, a guy named Otto Rowetter. If we could practice going to the, there we go. Otto Rowetter in 1913 invented the greatest thing, sliced bread. And like most inventors, like most technologists, Otto went out, got some money together, and made sure he had the patents so that no one would steal his idea. And the other thing he did was he made sure he had the factory all lined up. He made sure he had the operations in place so when everyone showed up to buy his sliced bread, he'd be ready. And for 17 years, no one bought sliced bread. Otto Rowetter was a complete failure. And it wasn't until much later, 17 years later, when the patent ran out, that Otto realized his mistake. He'd forgotten to ask a question, a two-word question. Who cares? No one was waking up in the middle of the night or in the morning and say, oh, good, I can go downstairs, get some of that sliced bread, and make me some toast. No one wanted sliced bread. No one needed sliced bread. No one had been sold sliced bread. And it wasn't until these guys came along and marketed sliced bread. In 1930, they started doing this, putting it in the bright bag with a little twist tie, built strong bodies, 12 ways, the whole thing. They marketed sliced bread, and people bought it. It became a success. It's only four simple words. If your ideas spread, you win. That's the goal. Ideas that spread win. It doesn't matter if you're in the coffee business or whether, sorry, whether you're an intellectual. It doesn't matter whether you're in the computer business or the TV business or if you're in the business of running airlines. It doesn't matter. All of these people succeeded in every line of work for one simple reason. They figured out how to get their ideas to spread. And if your ideas spread, that's it. You win. Everything else takes care of itself. And what we are sitting at right now is the end of a 100-year stretch where our culture, our country, has been all about the spread of ideas. That we have optimized for it. We've lined up for it. We've gotten excited about it. We've rewarded people for it. Ideas have never spread faster. They've never spread more fluently than they spread right now, right here. And a big part of that is TV. Not just television, but the TV thinking. And TV thinking is based on two words, pay attention. And when you think about those two words, you got to stop for a second, because there's a lot of meaning there. Attention. Well, I don't know about you, but I only get 17 spare minutes a day. And just because someone comes along and buys an ad for a minute on a TV show doesn't mean I'm going to give them a minute of my hard-earned attention. I don't get that attention back. So the equation's really interesting. Pay attention. You pay the media company, you pay the post office, you pay the phone company, and I have to pay you with my attention. And TV was the greatest example of this ever. But it all is about a simple idea. You can buy attention in our country. If you've got money, you can market yourself by buying attention. That led to what I call the TV industrial complex. A little bit of a takeoff here on the Beltway. But it starts like this. You buy a bunch of ads. Those ads get you more distribution. That distribution helps you sell more stuff. When you sell more stuff, you make a profit. And if you're smart, you buy more ads. My loft, where I work in New York, 7,000 square foot thing, used to be a printing plant. Charles Revson from Revlon did all his printing there. Revlon is a multi-billion dollar company because of this. In 1947, he bought some TV ads. He was one of the first cosmetic people to do so. It worked. He got distribution. He made money. He bought more TV ads. The cycle repeats itself and repeats itself. And if you do things right, and I don't care if you're selling to consumers, stuff like makeup, 
or selling to businesses or the government, things like ball bearings, it's all the same. You can interrupt people, get their attention, and make money. All these products succeeded, not because they were really super amazing, except maybe Pop-Tarts, but because, <laughs> but because they were organized to be on television. Right? They were organized to be average products for average people that could be advertised like crazy and make a profit in the process. And the bad news that I'm here to give you tonight is this. While we were watching, while you were building your business, while you were making your plans, while your clients were struggling to build what they built, somebody canceled the TV industrial complex. All of a sudden, on our watch, right? On our watch, TV ads don't work, radio ads don't work, magazine ads don't work. All that stuff doesn't work like it used to. There's a whole bunch of reasons, and I'll cover a couple of them, but there didn't used to be a billion web pages. There didn't used to be 500 TV channels. You didn't used to be able to kill three or four hours IMing people on the internet when you were supposed to be watching Gilligan's Island, right? So this picture is really fuzzy. I had a bad cold when I took it. But I show it to you for an important reason. Take a look at that blue box, center, one shelf up. The brand manager for that product spent $100 million last year trying to interrupt me. $100 million on coupons, shelving allowances, TV ads, radio ads, direct mail, uh, detailing at doctor's offices, so that when I was sick, and I had money in my hot little hand, I would go to the deli and buy her product. And do you know what I did? I ignored every single one of those hundred million dollars worth of ads. Because I don't have a pain reliever problem. Twenty years ago, I started buying the stuff in the yellow box. I'm finished. I don't need another pain reliever. I'm done. She's invisible. She doesn't exist, right? It's as if her product doesn't even exist. And here is sort of the end of my bad news. I think I got a little bit more. You're the product in the blue box. Your law firm, your accounting firm, your technology firm, your, your agency is trying to sell stuff to the government. All of you are the blue box. Unless you are doing something so way out there, what you are busy doing is trying to solve a problem for people who either don't know you exist, don't want to know you exist, or don't have a problem they believe you can solve. And we've got to do something about that if we're going to get things to grow.